Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and today I'm here at the Rock Island Auction Company taking a look at a single-shot US Trials rifle that will be in their upcoming April of 2020 Premier Auction. Uh, this is a, an 1871 pattern Ward Burton rifle, and I actually did a very short video on this many years ago, and I want to do a better one for you today. So. What we have here is, of course, a trials rifle. It's a single shot bolt action. It's one of the very first bolt actions that the US military experimented with, but not actually quite the first. There were a couple of carbines during the Civil War that take that prize. Uh, this guy is a collaborative effort between two generals. William Ward, who patented the bolt system, which is, by the way, very similar to what you'll find on the Palmer carbines, and Bethel Burton, who patented the extractor and ejector mechanism. Uh, this was initially submitted to the US government around 1870, and it was tested against a bunch of other competition, including a lot of foreign competition. So it was tested against the Sharps, and the Rolling Block, and the Morgenstern, and the Martini Henry, a bunch of different guns. And it did okay, but not great. It certainly didn't win. However, it was American made. And so two years later, in 1872, when the Terry trials came up, uh, the government decided that it would go ahead and add the Ward Burton to those trials. Specifically, it would have Springfield Arsenal, or Armory, uh, produce 1,000 rifles and 300 carbines. And they actually went just slightly over. I see varying numbers, but it's like 1,020 rifles and 313 carbines. I don't know the exact numbers, but just over the requirements. Uh, and what the Ward Burton did in this trial, which was a much smaller trial, or a much smaller field of contenders, there were only, I think, four rifles in, or four systems in this 1872 trial, um, it provided a bolt action system because there were examples of basically all the other major types of, of breach system in this trial. So uh, ultimately, the winner would be the Trapdoor Springfield. But let's take a look at this first, and then we'll see what happened to it, and whether or not guys liked it in the field. No mistaking the fact that this is a bolt action. Rotate that up 90 degrees, open the bolt. Also no mistaking the fact that it is a single shot rifle. You got space for one cartridge in there, you drop it in, say cock on close action, lock it down, and you're ready to fire. The locking lugs on this are a pair of interrupted thread styles. So we've got like six lugs on top and six more on the bottom there that lock into the back of the receiver. Uh, today we would prefer locking lugs on the front because it tends to be a little stronger under very high pressure. In the black powder cartridge days, I should mention this was chambered for the 5070 cartridge, um, and at that period the pressure was much lower. Rear locking lugs were just fine for that. And rear locking lugs put the, the critical engagement surfaces farther away from the chamber where they were less likely to get black powder fouling in them. So this was actually an advantage uh, in this rifle's time. Now one other uh, function on here, one other control, is the safety. This is the safety. This is a little spring-loaded plunger that we can lift up and down. You can see there is a hole in the bolt right there. If I open the bolt just a little bit to that position, I can lock it in that position. It will not fire because it is out of battery there. Uh, you cannot open or close it, so you can't bump it open. If you want to fire, all you have to do is push this forward and down, safety is disengaged, drop the bolt handle to the locked position, and then you're ready to fire. We've got a nice ladder sight on here that's out, uh, graduated out to 900 yards. Your, your riser there. Flip that back. Barrel bands are pretty standard stuff. You have, of course, a cleaning rod at the end, and if you wanted a bayonet, this would have taken a socket-style bayonet. It is quite clearly marked here on the top of the bolt, uh, Ward Burton, and a couple of patent dates. And then these rifles were actually manufactured by Springfield. Uh, so they are government production guns, model as 1871. And we have a pair of inspector cartouches in the stock as well. It's cool that those are still legible. And a US stamp on the butt plate. Taking out the bolt is pretty easy, except there is one important little trick. That is this screw. If you rotate that 90 degrees, you can actually engage a lock that prevents the, the bolt from being removed. So 
As long as this is in the right position, you simply open the bolt, pull the trigger down, and pull the bolt out the back. However, if that screw is not in the right position, the way this thing actually works is that this bar locks into this channel in the bolt, just like that. And when you pull the trigger, what you're doing is pulling that bar down low enough that the bolt will come out the back of the rifle. However, we've got this, this little blocking bar right there. And if that is threaded in, just rotate it by hand, that, if that goes 90 degrees now, you've limited travel of the trigger, it'll still fire, but the bolt won't come out of the rifle. So we want to make sure that that's left over there, where this bar can drop fully. We've got quite a lot going on inside the bolt as well, and to disassemble this, the bolt head is attached to this shroud, and we want to rotate it down to this position, right there, and then it will come forward, and we've got a whole mess of bits inside there. So if we pull that out, that's a rather complicated part. And then we've got our firing pin there, and our firing pin spring. Notice that the bolt itself has these uh, ridges in it. Uh, those are for powder fouling to accumulate in. So you can get the powder fouling into here where it won't uh, cause reliability problems with the rifle. Uh, Colt uh, cylinder axes in the revolvers have the same sort of, in there, it's a, in those it's a, a threaded groove, but that's to accumulate fouling. So a bunch of pretty complex parts to manufacture here. Okay, you got a bunch of stuff sticking off this firing pin. And the same goes for the extractor, a finely shaped flat spring extractor that goes up inside uh, the bolt. Note that our ejector is just a pin right there that sits back until the bolt is fully open, in which case this hits that bolt locking uh, lug, which is going to push it forward and kick the cartridge up out the top of the action. And if you look closer you'll see even the firing pin itself has uh, grooves in it for fouling. So there's the bolt fully disassembled. I would like to point out that despite having uh, a lot of complicated machining going into this, it's actually a pretty darn easy system to put back together. We drop the extractor in there. The firing pin is going to sit right there with those two angled surfaces lining up. Spring goes in the back. And then this whole assembly slides right in there. And there it is back in position, ready to go in the rifle. So right from the beginning, the, the Ward Burton had some issues, because troopers were just not familiar with its operating system. Most of the rifles of the day, certainly the guns that uh, the Army had been using, had big exposed hammers on them. And it was very easy to tell from the outside, or whether you're an officer looking at the gun or you're the soldier holding it, is this thing loaded? Is it cocked? Will it fire if I put my finger on the trigger? Because this is long before the days of what we would today consider good trigger discipline. Well, the word Burton, it's a bolt action. There's no way to tell if it's loaded or cocked from the outside. And this led to some uncomfortable handling and some accidental discharges. And that really prejudiced troops against it, regardless of its technical merits. So it was a reasonably good rifle. Uh, but it ended up last place in the Terry Trials because guys weren't really familiar with it. There were a few uh, manufacturing issues. There were apparently some heat treat issues with the bolt. That can have a big impact as well. Uh, the rifle would come back in 1878 and be entered once again in a trial, this time with a tube magazine as a repeating rifle. And it seemed to have some... Uh, it warranted some uh, so a look there, but ultimately it was the problems that it had, like its legacy from the 1872 trials, kind of killed it in the later trials. And it 
ultimately never went any farther. So this is a really nice example of a Ward Burton. They're not very common rifles today, as you can understand from the small production numbers. Uh, if you'd like to add it to your own collection, of course it is coming up for sale here at Rock Island, you can check out their pictures and description and everything else uh, in their catalogue through their website. Thanks for watching.